Hello and uh, welcome to Art with Mr P. This week we're painting and uh, there are good connections here with science in the curriculum because scientists are also interested in how uh, we use colour, how colours mix and how light behaves. I'm going to ask you to paint a head and shoulders painting. I'm going to ask you to try and make it monochromatic, which means only using one colour. So we're going to be very interested in tints and tones of that colour. Now, I'm going to work from a photograph. You can work from a photograph or you could get someone sat in front of you. Or you could fix up a mirror and paint yourself. Anyway, enough from me. Let's do it. So, hopefully you've been able to find uh, a picture of uh, someone's face, a head and shoulders shot. This is the picture that I found. Looks familiar somehow. Uh, what I'd like you to do is to produce a monochromatic painting of the picture that you found. But before you start any painting, spend a little time looking at the picture that you have and make some notes in your mind about it. So looking at this one, hopefully you can see that this area that I'm outlining actually is absolutely white. Put the white and white there. And then there are areas that are light grey. And then there are areas that are darker grey. Like down here, and around here, and over here, and around the nose. You'll notice, actually, uh, noses are quite interesting. So there's a white bit along the ridge of the nose, and then there's darkness behind. But there are no lines around here to show exactly. There are no lines to show where the nose is. It's all about, it's all about shading and tone. Mm -hmm. So tone is darker versions of a colour. And like tints, which are a colour with white, so they're lighter versions. And then you'll notice there's really dark grey, almost black, like parts of the moustache where the mouth is, the back of the head, this bit of button inside the collar here. So I made a note of that. So first thing I'm going to do is sketch that out very quickly so that it goes something like that. Now primary sevens with me will know that the heads have things in specific places. So the eyes are halfway down the head, for example that the ears generally line up with the eyes. But it depends to a certain extent on uh, the angle that you're looking at the person. So we've got a vague sketch there of this person. Okay, so there we go. It was vaguely. And what we're going to do now, no more drawing. We're going to go straight into painting. Make a note of where the white is. And I've got a range. So essentially I'm going to use greys here. 
Uh, maybe from time to time, as I'm trying to use up this paint I got on this palette, it may be that some colour creeps in there. Now, here's my lightest grey. So I'm thinking about where the light greys are. So if I move this over a little bit, so you can see. Think about where the light greys are. There's light grey down here, isn't there? And under here, and then it goes under the neck a bit. And round the back of the neck. There's light grey under that eye, and some over here. A little bit on the nose. And here. So I'm just, all I'm doing is trying to find light greys. Yeah? Okay. Now when you're painting, try and move the brush in the direction of the, whatever it's you're painting. So if the collar comes down and around, move your brush like that. Yeah? So we're moving this down. We need a little bit more paint and water. There we are. There's always um, some middleish grey in the hair. Quite tricky. There's middleish grey down this side of the forehead. Okay, I'm going to go for a slightly darker grey now. Then. Well, I've got some blue in there, but not too dark. Something like that. Okay, so we've got grey in the hair. I'm trying to move the brush in the direction the hair looks like it grows. I'm looking for the darker areas, but not too dark. Oh, that's not right. You can leave the hair fairly rough because it helps to give it texture. We've got darkness under this eye again. Oh, too dark. Some grey down here. It's tricky though, it looks, isn't it? The shadow comes around here under the chin. We've got more shadow over here. Shadow at the top of the collar. Could do with a bit smaller brush. Shadow under here. So we're looking for the medium greys. Yeah. Don't get carried away by going into all the shadows. Okay, and then under the neck, there's this darker shadow. Get rid of it. And the nose is kind of defined by this darker shadow that comes around. Okay. Oh, I've missed out the ear quite a bit, haven't I? So now I'm going for really dark. So for really dark, we've got an eyebrow up here. Another one over here. Looking, looking at the shape all the time here. We've got the definition now trying to get this brush thin so I'm pressing it down into the paint so I try and get a thin line there. A bit like that. Okay. 
bags under his eyes. Well, if I was this, I'd probably have bags under my eyes. And I can try and put the pupils in, in the irises, I mean. So the colour bits of the eyes. And we've got darkness down here. And down here. And then we need to get the moustache in. Called something like that. So can you see how I'm dragging the brush in the direction I think the moustache hair grows? We've got a dark shadow under here. It's really dark under here. I'm actually going to get some really dark going down here. And in the eyes. And around the back of the head. In the ear. A bit neglected on this today. Isn't it? Oh, the ear now actually the ear's a bit high, isn't it? Okay, we've got shadow under here. And the top of the head too. Which goes off the top. Okay, we've got shadow down, definitely down here, dark. And we've got shadow where the collar is. Under here. Now, don't worry if yours doesn't work out first time. This is quite a tricky one, yeah? It's not something that you do very often. I can't imagine you've had much practice. Okay, a little bit more shadow under here. Put some more darkness in here. Definitely dark under here. Right, I'm going to go back to the dark grey again. Very dark grey. Sometimes when your brush starts to run out of paint and it's a bit too dry, you can use that. And you can keep going, just filling in, filling in the bits. Okay, you can revisit to certain extent if you just have water on your brush. You can blend it in a bit. But don't go, you can smudge in the edges of it, yeah? but don't get too carried away. It's easy to get carried away like that. There's more shadow in there, I think. So we're looking at, we've been looking at tone. This is a monochromatic portrait of Stalin. So it's not spot on. I think the brush I used uh, was a little bit on a large side and it was quite quick. But you get the idea. So just to recap, I started with a pencil. I then filled in the lightest shadows. Slightly darker shadows, darker shadows and then the darkest shadows. Just start light, work from light to dark. Well done. Okay, uh, so what I've asked you to do is to paint a monochromatic, a single colour portrait of someone. We've looked at tints and tones. And there are good connections with science here. Next week, we're going to revisit collage. So before then, you might want to get a collection together of bits of old magazines and newspapers and wrapping paper 
and interesting patterns that you find on other bits of materials that you can cut up and stick down. I'll see you then.